stay tuned because we've got an amazing show for you today. You'll find all kinds of fascinating stories from local artists to people from all around the world. Their stories and more are all right here on The Journal. Journal. Welcome to, welcome to another episode of The Journal. I'm Alex, and I'll be your host for this today's episode, featuring a wide diversity of people in the arts and how they found their way, whether it be in filmmaking, photography, or music. And also stay to see an exclusive performance by one of Centennial's very own, Haley Viral. Now for our first story of the day, we're going to explore what it means to find new opportunities as an international student in a country halfway across the globe. Here is Changing Nations. You know, I, I expected to meet a lot of racism here in Canada. It's because of uh, the population of Ukrainians here. Uh, I came here on 2014, and on 2014 happened a story between like Russia and Ukraine. Uh, like uh, it was war about the Crimea. So and because of like four million Ukrainians here and like couple hundred thousand of Russians in Canada, I definitely expected to meet a racism here, but uh, I didn't meet it and I'm so happy about it. Yeah, of course I miss my family and my friends back home. For the first year, it was really easy for me. I don't know, it sounds really weird, but there was like a moment for me when I feel totally independent. So I need to do everything by myself, and after that, I'm like, yeah, it's tough being without like my friends that I spend most of my life with. Yeah, I definitely prefer staying in Canada than in Russia. There are several points about it. So the first one is like the military service. So military service in Russia is obligation. You have to go there for a year. So back in the days. Uh, all you, you could do about it is just, I don't know, hide. Now they made a new law, if you won't show up, so basically they send you, they send you a letter and you have to go there. If you not go in there, it's uh, three years of imprisonment. So this is one of the points I'm here. Second one is uh, different mentality of people, uh, I definitely like Canadian mentality, it's like people always happy, not like back home. Uh, I don't want to say that all Russians are like that, but especially in the, in the big cities like Moscow, people are very rude. Uh, definitely feel safer here in Canada. I mean, Canada is one of the safest countries in the world. There is nothing gonna happen to you unless you're like looking for troubles yourself. Uh, like in Russia, story that happened to me uh, this summer this past summer so I was in my uh, with my friends in the pub we were just drinking beer it was like first day I came back from Canada so I spent in Canada two years and after like this safe place I came back to like wild Russia <laughs> sounds like wild west anyway so uh, we were drinking in a pub and uh, one drunk guy came behind my friend and like closed his eyes with his hands and he said Oh, who is here? He was like trying to prank us. So my friend didn't understand the joke, he just stood up and punched him in the face. So the friends of that guy came to us and like, Oh guys, what are you doing? Why did you punch our friend in the face? So we just started to argue with each other. And that guy who got punched in the face, he took a knife and he stopped my friend twice. After that, uh, we started to fight and another guy took a gun and we were so scared we didn't know if that was real or no and uh, we bent his arm and my leg was right next to the gun so he shot it and th thankfully there was a rubber bullet inside not a real one after like five minutes police came he took everybody except me and my friend who was stopped and after emergency came and took us to the hospital my friend spent 
that was Changing Nations. And just a little fact for everyone watching, we have Leo right here in the control room working on the prompter right now. Let's join my co-host Lakshmi there right now. Thanks, Alex. As film and TV studio students, we relate to artists of every category. We hope you do, too. Up next, we have a profile of a local musician and teacher, Scott Castles. Here's Strings. It's fun. And we just went to a place called Nephew Music. She was willing to pay for them as long as I practiced. Mm -hmm. And I think I was one of those kids that actually practiced. I really liked it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> the older I get, the more I really appreciate that my mom introduced me to, uh, or encouraged me, right, being called Guitar Player Magazine. Um, I sent in a demo, and it su really surprised me that they actually put it in the magazine. I, I know internet, so yep. there's an old shot of me. What's kind of interesting about this, um, mm -hmm. what they used to do, so... There's a bunch of amazing guitar players, actually, mm -hmm. here. And then this guy. <laughs> uh, you would have to phone and pay 75 cents per minute to hear any one of these players demo. We're playing our own tunes. Mm -hmm. We're playing at a place called the Gasworks mm -hmm. on Young Street. Um, it was pretty famous back then. Uh, a lot of, um, I guess, the rock bands played there. Mm -hmm. like pretty famous. Actually, my brother was in a Rolling Stones tribute band. They played there, and Bon Jovi showed up wow. and got up and did a couple of tunes with them. Like it was that kind of place mm -hmm. yeah. that I think Aerosmith showed up there and got up and jammed like that. Yeah, we were opening up for, uh, unfortunately, I can't remember the name of the band, but they, they had a bit of a following. I don't know, we didn't really, but we're playing our own tunes, and there was quite a crowd, right? The bar was full, and there was a bunch of guys at the front of the stage, and they seemed to like what we were doing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, we were pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Scott stuck to his guns and continued his life in music. He even makes a living doing it. Doesn't that sound nice to you, Alex? Well, yeah. I mean, I'd be some kind of fraud if I said it didn't. I mean, not I'm bad. sure everyone watching would agree also. Up next is our final story of the day. I know it feels like the journal just started gaining momentum, but all good things eventually come to an end. Here's a doc featuring two college students who are talented up-and-coming photographers. Photographers here in a talented duo attempt it. So I'm Tamara, I'm the Tam of Tam and Kit. I'm Jessie and I'm the Kit portion of Tam and Kit. We met in school last year. I left for two years, I'm older. <laughs> and then I came back and we happened to be in the same year and we had a class together. And uh, I remember seeing her work and being like really interested in her lighting skills. And so then I messaged her or she messaged me one of those things and I, I ended up model uh, for her to model. I think I offered. <laughs> I was like, if you need someone, yeah. <laughs> I'm your girl. And then I modeled for her and we sort of like figured out that we worked really well together. My parents like older 
friends, I get a lot of like, oh, you go to art school? Like, what are you gonna do after? And I'm like, yeah. Like, there's every I don't field. Like that is, question. Like, every field <laughs> is just so competitive. It's just like, you just have to really yeah. want to do what you want to do. Like, have faith in you us. Know? We're gonna do a good job. <laughs> I actually didn't even know I wanted to be an artist until like halfway through high school and then I had to like go back and retake a bunch of art courses. But in my like last year, um, we had a like, dark room at my school and that's when I sort of was like, ooh, I kind of like photos. <laughs> I always drew stuff since I was like six. I was always drawing, that's what got me into art. I took all the art courses I could in high school. I stayed late in high school just to take them all and then my friend, my best friend, she was taking photo and I was afraid to go in the dark room because of the spinning door and I thought I'd be claustrophobic. And then I went, I know, <laughs> and then I went in anyway and then I loved it, like seeing all the photos develop. And then when I went to OCAD, it was a really tough choice because we start with a general year and I was drawing and painting, doing everything, so yeah. did she. And then I guess it just came down to the, like having to pick something when you're in university, which really helped because I'm so I love doing everything. But that's also like yeah. the one benefit. Like <laughs> OCAD has so many cons, to be honest, like any university, I guess. But the good thing is like we have so many electives and we have so many different studios and areas mm -hmm. of practice that it's like you can pretty much do your Try major, everything. but then you can still like follow your heart to yeah. do what you want. Because I also love doing like printmaking and illustration and writing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's the perfect place to be able to do all this. So we're in our fourth year at OCAD right now, and we're in directed studio, and that's a, as opposed to thesis where you kind of become an artist, we kind of are more prepared for the working world, so we yeah. wanted to make a company. So instead of doing like a final body of work, we're doing like a Business. portfolio where you like focus on like more of a commercial area of photography, yeah. so we decided to do fashion and editorial together, and we sort of came up with this idea as we were like, it was like the first or second week of class and there, it felt like they were like really piling on the work and we were both really stressed out and we were like exiting the girls washroom and we were just like, I wish we could work together. And then we are like, <laughs> why can't we? And then we ran up to our chair of photography and we are like, we want to work together, like what do we have to do to make this happen? We grew up with digital, so but being at OCAD, we learned film too, so we can do anything. It's really easy when you've grown up, like with everything being so digital, the adjustment is like pretty much nothing. A lot of us got like our parents' cameras, so it was like, ooh, I get to try this little thing. So we got like a great mix of like having the influence of film and digital. Depending on the client, you can kind of choose the aesthetic and then go back to film if yeah. you want. Yeah, and like the great thing is like while well, you're shooting you can just shoot some film, shoot some digital, so it's like you get the look but then you also get like the accessibility to keep shooting with digital. We usually shoot digital because when we're shooting with clients we like to shoot tethered on an iMac so it's like they can see instantly what it looks like. So if they so we know they're happy. Yeah, so if, it's, if they're like, ooh, chin fat, I don't like that, it's like they okay. can see Put how they look. Because sometimes it's like, we'll think someone looks really good, but they have a different like perspective of themselves, and we want to make sure we're showing people how they want to be seen. I like working with the clients and like framing the image, styling it, posing people. And she's really good, like technically with the lights and really like specialty mm -hmm. photoshopping. Yeah. I'll style the set, she'll style the people. Yeah. And then I'll do the lighting and Photoshop. I'm the nerd. She's really social. But at some point, it's <laughs> like we each sort of do everything because it's very like give and take. You're always Back and asking. Forth. Yeah, you're always asking for like your opinion on something because like that's the benefit of collaborating is like you have a person there with you to be like to tell you that's dumb <laughs> or like that's cool. <laughs> so it's nice. <laughs> I have a dream of shooting for like. Gucci or Acme, yeah. if that counts. So. It would definitely be more so brand rather than model because we started out being like, we just want to shoot not average people, but like not models. So we get like a unique look. Yeah. We just, our style is very quirky and we don't want it to be too high fashion necessarily. So usually.
using using people who are off the street who might never be considered by a modeling agency who are still beautiful and lovely. Yeah. And are photography totally like cool. any um, art career is just so competitive that you sort of have to like and everything's been done. So it's so hard to try and find like a way to sort of stand. It's that time, folks. We're proud to present here on The Journal an exclusive live performance. Here to perform Shine, an original song of hers. Please welcome Haley Verrill. Job. Thank you so much. And you can hear more of Haley on her website, HaleyVeralMusic.com, and on YouTube at Haley Viral Music. And that's all the time we have here today. Don't worry because we have one more episode in store. So don't miss the season finale of the journal tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in today, though. I'm Lakshmi. And I'm Alex. And here's more of Haley Viral. Daddy.
told me once, Daddy told me twice, Daddy told me to keep my goal in sight. Daddy told me once, Daddy told me twice, Daddy said keep on on the dice. Shake them to the left, shake them to the right. I'm gonna shake, 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 shake all through the night. 